All right, everybody, this is Ross, and welcome back to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast-style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We talk a lot about fruits, a lot about vegetables, some of the more weird and interesting fruits and vegetables that you guys probably have never heard of. Um, and in fact, in tonight's episode of Fruit Talk, we're going to be talking about something that's a little less common to grow, which is called the fig. And I have a little bit of a blog post here that I want to go over with you guys. Um, it's about the 15 steps to success that you guys can implement no matter where you live. If you're growing figs, these are, in my opinion, some of the most important things that you should be aware of when growing figs. And uh, I think this is going to be something that a lot of newer growers really pay attention to and should probably bookmark this this blog post here. So our blog is figboss.com. And you go there on the home page and you can see the uh, 15 steps to success fig checklist. I'll put this down in the, uh, in the comments, guys, in the description uh, on YouTube. But as I said, we have 15 steps and I think these blog posts go ver a very long way because I actually have uh, additionally on the on the blog is another blog post about the fig timeline and you can I think you could probably just type in in the search bar here fig timeline and there you'll come up with the uh, the timeline that I use and I follow for my trees and this is kind of just a nice little guide for the newbies out there that need to follow along in the season and maybe they're not really sure what they should be doing at this current moment and you need to adjust I guess the dates depending on where you guys live but this is the uh, the dates and what I like to do at these particular times of the year um, so that you guys know you know exactly where we are in the season how to follow along what you should be doing so this this blog post here I think is pretty similar it's immensely important I think um, to helping out the newbies and I'll probably at one point have this particular checklist somewhere in, a, in my book when I finally get uh, to finishing it because uh, I think it's that important I think it's um, something that any of you guys can just have and kind of look over whenever you guys want so I'm um, happy to make this available so I don't really have them in any particular order here but I do have 15 of them that I, I came up with there might be more might be a little bit less but they do deserve a little bit of explaining um, because they are kind of just blanket statements or statements that uh, kind of give you as much information as a, in a short period of time as possible so let's kind of expand on some of these here um, number one and this is the one that's probably the most interesting and the most recent to me that I had never really um, noticed before or never really had kind of realized before is that you know that figs like full sun but what you didn't know or at least I didn't really realize to what extent is that you need to make sure that your trees are, are getting an adequate light penetration into their canopy so what you can do about that is you can bend the limbs and prune accordingly to open up the canopy and that's actually what I'm going to be doing I think a little bit later uh, this evening I'm going to go outside and get some wire that people use for bonsai and I'm going to start bending some of the limbs um, to expand out the canopy to actually um, you know really uh, bend some of the scaffolds it's really what I'm going to focus on is not the fruiting branches but the scaffolds because um, we train most of our trees as a single stem trunk and to get them a wider canopy to be able to reach more light, we need to obviously um, focus on having those limbs at the right angle and having those limbs a certain length as well. Um, so I think all that's real important because if you don't have the, the right light penetration into the canopy, if it's too dense, you have too many shoots as figs really like to do, especially after you do a lot of pruning they'll put out a lot of new shoots, um, you're not going to get that light penetration and you're not going to get the fruit that you thought you would. 
Um, so especially if you guys have them in more of a bush shape, you'll see this pretty often is that uh, they send out a lot of trunks from the base and often things get very crowded and congested and there's just not enough light into that canopy. So we're trying to really focus on either you know using that wire to bend the limbs or using rocks. You can tie rope around rocks and then hang them on the branches and have the, the branches bend. You can also stake uh, the limbs. Um, you can use garden staples if you have them in the ground. You can pretty much staple um, some limbs basically and form them into a cordon system because a cordon system would work really well for figs and getting that uh, that proper light penetration into the trunk. So, yeah, I think uh, we're going to get sort of back to that in a minute, but that's a real big one um, and one that's often overlooked. Number two, having a, a well-draining and consistently moist soil. So people ask me all the time, how often do I water? Should I water every day? Well, I don't know, okay? I wish people would stop asking me <laughs> because I don't know. I'm not there. I don't see your tree. I don't know what conditions your tree is in. Um, I'll never be able to tell you that. I'll never be able to tell anybody that. So the only one that's ever going to know if they need to water their tree is you. And the reason you can, the way you can figure this out is by just getting your hand in the soil. That's what I do. I do it every day. If uh, my trees are looking a little dry, it looks like they may need some water. Then I go out there and I start um, sticking my hand in the soil. And if it's if it's dry, then they need some water. And I'll turn on the uh, either the the automatic timer for my drip system, or I'll do some hand watering. Um, and the way that you can achieve a moist, a consistently moist soil, because you don't want things that are dry. You don't want a dry soil, but you don't want a wet soil, right? When you water your trees in, the soil gets wet and it gets sort of saturated. In that middle stage is moist in between dry and wet so if you guys are keeping it consistently moist you're not only going to have a very happy and healthy tree but you're also going to have a superior fruit quality um, you're going to have less splitting um, you're just going to be a lot happier so we're trying to keep things ideally actually a little bit slightly below moist consistently for the most optimum fruit quality um, but this is not necessarily a checklist here for um, having the best fruit quality. This is a checklist here for success, having a successful fig season. So we, we want to keep things consistently moist. And a well-draining soil really aids in that, not necessarily in the water holding capacity um, because a, a very dense, heavy soil would be able to hold more water, but we don't want to have things wet. We want to have things moist, right? So having some well-draining soil is actually going to make things um, moist more often than not. And even when you water, it doesn't take it very long for that soil condition to go from wet to moist. Additionally, a well-draining soil is going to have a lot of air. Roots need air. You don't have the air, you're not going to have a healthy tree. Um, so extremely, extremely important. I think that probably could be number one, in all honesty. If you don't have that, you got nothing. So you got to focus on the soil first and foremost. Following up on the soil, we need to be applying some fertilizer every year, ideally in the beginning of the season. I like to do it uh, four to six times a year early in the season. Um, and I like to do an application of 10, 4, 12. I think that's the most ideal ratio for your feedings. Um, I've started to move over towards um, two products I really like instead of feeding the soil. The soil we could use more organic materials on. Um, that's kind of what I'm moving over towards is if you're going to you know, really focus on the health of your trees, you want to have more organic material in the soil maybe some mycorrhizae, um, you know, you want to cover all your micronutrients, trace elements as well. So specifically, I really like calcium, magnesium, silica. Those are extremely important to have in your soil. Um, and then as every season goes by, you know, either add some mulch or take away the mulch or add some, you know, more organic material in the form of compost, worm castings, organic fertilizer, 
And what I've been sort of moving over towards is actually some foliar applications of fertilizer. And uh, I'm doing those a bit more often than probably four to six times a season. At least I could see that more uh, a bit being applied more often in the future. Um, and those I'm using are the Foliage Pro and the Dynagro Protect. So those, those are both Dynagro products. I use them at the same time. Foliar spray all the trees and uh, I haven't exactly gotten the you know the application rates down just yet but those I find are going to be easier to use and more effective. I really like the results of using those two products. It doesn't necessarily get me a 10 4 12 but um, I think it's pretty close to that. Um, okay so also what you should probably focus on is removing weeds um, unnecessary suckers from the base, you know, in any other competition. Um, I wouldn't necessarily classify other fig trees as competition, although they sort of are in a way, but figs and other plants love to grow very close together. I wouldn't necessarily classify that as a problem. Um, I would classify a problem as having a lot of weeds or unnecessary growth on the fig tree that could be taking away energy or water from the tree. Uh, number five, keeper, keeping winter pruning to a minimum uh, when possible is definitely a good idea, especially for fruit production. You know, uh, if we wanted to have a really vigorous tree, we would do some more winter pruning. Um, if we want to have some more fruit set, uh, we would keep winter pruning to a minimum and instead focus on summer pruning. The summer pruning in the form of pinching uh, does induce the fruits. Just like in other fruit trees, it, uh, it really encourages uh, those particular fruit trees to either set fruit buds or put out more fruit buds or actually put out flowers in the case of the fig. Um, so some varieties, not all, but most varieties do not really respond too well to pruning and really it comes down to either the hormones some varieties get their hormones out of whack which is a, a more smaller amount of varieties um, Smith is a good one as an example if you prune that one too hard it's uh, it's difficult for it to shake its hormonal problem um, because there's always got to be that balance between what's on top and what's on bottom right so that's kind of what this whole section number five is about is keeping that balance between what's on top what's on bottom but also what happens when you do a lot of winter pruning is that the tree often tends to put out a lot of shoots so if the tree is putting out a lot of shoots we go back to number one we don't have adequate light penetration into the canopy you have to do a lot of thinning so really quite important there number six Ripen your fruits at the height of your season. Talk about I'll, I'll talk about this all the time. What is the height of your season? It's usually the driest and the warmest time of the year. This is when you're going to get the most optimum fruit quality. Um, ideally, the warmest though is classified as probably temperatures below 95 or at least below 100. If temperatures are above 80, somewhere between 80 and uh, 95, you're looking really good. You're going to have great fruit quality. You also don't want to have a lot of rain. So what you're trying to do is that if you live in a place like me, as an example, I get a lot of rain in the fall. Temperatures really cool down in the fall. So I want to get all my figs in in the summer before the real fall weather comes in around September 15th. So I do something called pinching, really try to get my trees to set the fruits and ripen the fruits before all that bad weather comes in. Some of you guys may have a nice little area of your season, like you may have hurricane season, right? Um, so you may want to get your fruits to ripen before hurricane season and then actually after hurricane season, for those of you guys in, in Florida, as an example. Um, but, you know, figs are very subjected to the climate. So if it's nice outside, like I said, it's dry and warm, you're going to have good quality fruits. If it's cold and wet, you're going to have bad quality fruits. So, um, you know, even if you get a fig, let's say really early in the season, if the weather is not good, it doesn't really matter. You know, a fig is not a fig unless it's to me ripened at uh, the best time of the year. So 
And then also brings us to number seven, when to harvest a fig. You definitely should wait until the neck is soft. Uh, every day that goes by as these figs ripen on the tree makes a big difference in the quality, in the flavor, um, in the sugar content of the fig. So like all fruits, the, the longer, for the most part, you can wait before it starts to spoil, um, usually the better it's going to taste. And um, certainly a big deal with a lot of people with figs, specifically because there's latex and sap. And if you pick the fig too early, you'll get that sap and that latex in your mouth or on your hands, and it's not pleasant. Um, so you got to wait till the neck is soft because the fig ripens from the bottom up. So if the neck is soft, you know the bottom of the fig and the rest of the fig is ripe. Number eight, uh, choose the right variety for your climate. And there's a huge genetic diversity out there with figs. There's thousands of varieties. Other fruits are very similar. Um, apples and mangoes and genetics really across the board when it comes to fruits and vegetables makes a huge difference. You can't have large figs unless you have a variety that's capable of producing large figs. You can't have early ripening fruits if you don't have a variety that's capable of ripening early ripening fruits. Same thing with brevas. If you want a variety that produces brevas, it has to have those genetics. If you want a fruit that tastes really good, you got to have the right genetics for it to taste good. Um, so the genetics are everything really uh, way more than what you would think. I think a lot of people that are newer don't necessarily fully comprehend that. Um, I certainly went a little overboard at times in the beginning um, of my journey here growing figs, and I didn't necessarily need to go as overboard as I did. But over the last, you know, I would say three-ish years, I have really have acquired a number of varieties that... Um, made a big difference. Um, varieties that were actually ended up being far superior to what I had prior. And finding out what that better variety is in your location is gonna really make a big difference. Um, not just in the actual fruit quality itself, but how the tree performs. So um, really think about first and foremost, when it comes to a variety, you should really pay attention to the humidity and rain resistance if you guys live in a more humid place. Also the time of the year that it ripens um, and then also the flavor. I think those are probably the three most important things. And and how is the flavor affected by particular climates? You know, you may have some figs that really taste great when they're caprified. You may have some figs that taste really bad when they're in a humid environment. So, um, you know, it depends. It, there's, there's a lot that goes into this. Number nine, um, raise the soil temperatures in the spring. And ideally in the summer, if it's too warm, your soil temperatures can get too warm and you may actually want to try to decrease the soil temperatures. We talk about this all the time on the YouTube channel. You want to maintain the temperatures in the soil around 78 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's uh, below that, your tree is not going to perform at its most optimal metabolic rate, 78 degrees Fahrenheit is the most optimal temperature in the soil for these figs to perform, just like us as humans, right? We have a particular temperature that our bodies have to operate at. If it's too high, we get a fever, right? So we always are trying to maintain that right temperature. We're trying to do the same thing with fig trees. Um, if things are above, if the, the root temperatures, the soil temperatures, are above 95, you're looking at potentially a summer dormancy, something that happens where it's too warm in the soil and the tree sort of goes into like a little bit of a hibernation throughout the summer. So ways to raise and lower the soil temperature usually revolves around mulch. If you have mulch that regulates the soil temperature very well, if you remove mulch early in the season, um, that'll raise the soil temperatures. If you add the mulch on in the summer, that will help cool down the soil in the summer. 10, I mean, 10 is pretty simple. We're really just trying to look for insects and pests. There's not many that the fig tree has, but scale is a big one and it can get out of control. I had a, someone who messaged me the other day on Facebook 
really bad scale infestation. I've never seen it that bad. But scale is a big one. Um, you got to really watch out for and borers. Borers can definitely get into the softer wood of a fig and uh, they'll destroy the tree. So you definitely want to look out for borers. Um, also a big fan because insects can really be a problem is you can you should definitely be picking up any fallen fruit um, because if you have fruit that's exposed to the elements and the insides exposed and maybe there's holes in the fruit or it's fallen on the ground it starts to ferment you can attract things like fruit flies wasps um, ants slugs all kinds of insects and that kind of actually brings us ahead a little bit to number 12 maybe I could you know add this in to number nine is you want to try to avoid ants and slugs with tangle foot. You can get a product that you wrap around the trunk of the tree, get some tin foil, wrap that around the trunk, apply the uh, tangle foot on the tin foil, and you won't have any ants or slugs going up and down your trees. You may also struggle with spider mites in a very dry indoor environment. Same with fungus gnats in an indoor wet environment. Um, and also organza bags or netting is a really big way to protect your figs uh, from critters. So if you got things like squirrels and birds, um, even groundhogs and possums and just everything you can think of that might, that might eat a fig, um, there are ways to protect them with uh, organza bags and nets and things like that. Number 11, uh, just going back one here, you got a rejuvenation prune um, or root prune, um, but ideally rejuvenation pruning, what that does is it really uh, revitalizes a tree that is heavily affected by fig mosaic virus. Also trees that might be growing very slowly, they might be a bit sick, they might be very old, um, they have lower than normal growth, lower than normal production, just uncharacteristic um, things that you may be seeing with your particular variety is ideally you would get a nice shoot from uh, underneath the soil, a nice sucker, and that sucker can then um, replace the trunk of your tree and you'll have a much healthier tree overall. Um, additionally, you may need to do some root pruning. That could definitely help because the problem could be in the roots and you want to try to avoid root knot nematodes whenever possible. I think that's a big one that I'll I'll probably write down here um, and try not to forget because I want to add this in here to the blog post. So things like root knot nematodes we talked about and combining 12 into number 10 and uh, spider mites we mentioned. gnats, you know, all kinds of critters there. All right, um, number 13. So this involves training your tree. Um, and this sort of relates back to number one, which is we should be training our, our fig trees as a tree and not necessarily as a bush um, whenever possible. Alternatively, we can be doing a, a cordon system. Cordons are really great. And the reason why cordons and tree forms work out so well is that they have a better light penetration into their canopy. A bush is pretty much a tree form without the main trunk at the bottom. So if you're going to do it like a bush, you need to make sure that you're limiting the number of canes and trunks from the base, I should say. Trunks, not canes. But if you have too many scaffolds on a tree, you're going to have a very dense canopy. If you have too many trunks from the base of a bush you're also going to have a very dense canopy so it's a nice little thing you gotta really worry about here that i think it, when it's put like that it makes a lot more sense also we need to be doing some pruning this leads us to number 14 and um, ideally your pruning should really consist of taking out the spindly weak growth um, usually that's a bit lower on the tree 
uh, diseased or damaged or dead wood. You can do that any time of the year, but really your main pruning should be taken care of um, in the winter time when the tree is dormant. And we need to make sure that our tree does go dormant, which brings us into number 15. There's a big uh, biological benefit to our trees if we do allow them to go dormant. So if you live in a colder place, don't bring it inside. Let it go dormant like a natural process, um, and you'll be a lot better off for it. You'll have a much better season. Ideally, that's what needs to occur. But some of you guys may live in you know, Malaysia or the tropics, and you're growing figs, and you don't have a dormancy period. Um, in that situation, you have no other choice, and there's other methods that you're going to have to go through um, to get your tree to be more productive over a long period of time. So um, for me, I think that dormancy process here is a huge biological benefit that we should be taking advantage of. Um, so that's kind of it here, guys, is that uh, there's these number of things here that we could do. And I could probably go on and on about some things that you guys might want to do in terms of if you live in a colder place or if you lived in a warmer or drier place. But this video is mainly um, for people who you know, just across the board are growing figs, not necessarily location specific. Um, but I'll tell you, if you go through our fig tree timeline as well on the blog, you'll see the uh, month by month things that we do here, like thinning and fertilizing. We talked about using dormant oils and horticultural oils. So that's a really good one that I'll probably include in, as well in this blog post. I'm going to probably edit this a little bit. It's nice to talk about these things and um, and do that. Also, there's like you know that that dormancy process of rehydration, rehydrating the roots, um, getting them off into a you know a warmer environment earlier in the season. Across the board, for many of us, it's going to really go a long way metabolically. Um, thinning and uh, reducing water is a good one after we see our fruit formation, reducing fertilizer or stopping fertilizer after fruit formation. Um, and even we could talk about rust if we're really trying to get location specific. So yeah, thank you guys here so much for watching this one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Fruit Talk. If you did, uh, leave us a review on, on iTunes. Please give us a nice little like on, on YouTube, subscribe, consider supporting us on Patreon and really check out our blog here. That would be the probably the best of it all. You can go down here to the bottom of any of the, the blog posts, the homepage, put in your email. You'll be on the newsletter. Whenever we create a new blog post, you'll be notified by email. And we'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care, and we'll see you next week.